Time now for the Educated Retirement Show with your host, Jay Kaplan. Jay discusses reverse mortgages and can answer your questions at 951-922-3532. Call lines are open at 951-922-3532. And now here's Jay. Well, good afternoon, and here is Jay, and thank you so much for spending some time with me and NASA Nelly and all the other weirdos here. Uh, it is the, uh, what is it? It's the 28th of this month, and this month is still January. So that's a good thing. We're still at the beginning of the year. It seemed like last year went by so fast, but then again, the last 75 years or so kind of went by pretty fast, too. So remember to call in when and if you can, 951-922-3532. That's our ONS station phone number. And welcome again to the Educated Retirement Radio here. This is, of course, KMET, 1490 AM. And this is the show <coughs> where we cough a lot. No, having a little uh, coughing thing today, so bear with me. So uh, this is the uh, show where we contemplate retirement, how to best prepare for retirement, and how to best successfully reti be retired. And on the other hand, we also get into a lot of nostalgia for us oldies. And I are an oldie, but you don't have to be an oldie to listen to the show. And as Grandpa of Grandpa Speaks would say, he has a show for the 50 plus, and I like to say that this is a show for the 80 plus, but I ain't quite there yet. So we have a great guest today, we think, but we'll wait and see. And um, and I think Grandpa, if he can make it today, he didn't know absolutely for sure, but he uh, may very well make it. And if he doesn't make it, remember to watch him tomorrow and listen to him. So remember that to top off your tank so you can make it all the way you need to have a plan. You need to have a strategy. That is, the future is now means you need to make a strategy now for the future. And our off-air number is 866-955-2233, 866-955-2293. There you go. I'm going to sound different a little bit now with this board in front of me because the speaker... <laughs> Microphones behind me. And uh, our website for this show and everything retirement, we like to think, is the educatedretirement.com, which is the same name as this show is. And um, I have a shortcut, which is drheckham.com, but www.theeducatedretirement.com or drheckham.com, which is a straight www.drhecm.com, and that stands for Home Equity Conversion Mortgage, drheckham.com. So, and you know what? Last time when I said that, I was speaking NASA Nelly because her orbit is just coming around again. Uh, I said I should wear my little doctor's thingy at least for the first minute, but I forgot again. But that's what happens when you get old. You forget things. I think that happens whether you're old or young, but so be it. The website is like I said, and you can go there and watch all the older shows. You can watch this current show while it's going on. You can watch current shows of other people who have their great shows here on KMET. And uh, there's, uh, so that that takes you directly. We, there's, there's a, uh, a link. That's what I'm trying to think of. Of course, there's a link on the front page that will take you directly to the uh, that part of KMET's website where you can do all of that. There's also a link to uh, YouTube. The YouTube channel is pretty much up to date, almost. There's also a link for uh, Louis Morasco, who works with me and is uh, located, in, or I should say I work with him, whatever you want to do. He's out on the other coast, the right coast, while we're here on the left coast. And uh, he's in uh, Florida, and uh, the great state of Florida. And uh, remember that uh, while we're talking about other shows, 
let's make sure we give that shout out to Grandpa. Let Grandpa speak, actually, whose show is here every Saturday morning at 9 a.m., which, as I always say, and I say it because it's true, it's the best way to start your weekend with a good and happy mood. And he is, he meaning Grandpa, is always in a good and happy mood. Something I can't brag about, not just yet. But then again, he's got, let's see, I'm a mere 75 and he's 91, maybe going on 92. So I've got some time maybe to work on it. So, and don't forget the West Coast Business Review with Daryl McCants. He is an app, he is a repeat offender here on this show. From time to time, had a cigar with him yesterday out in, uh, closer to his, he's out in Claremont, and uh, we meet sometimes at the old train station in Upland, which is really pretty neat area. And uh, when we go there, of course, uh, you know, we don't want my wife meeting face to face with somebody like Daryl, for God's sakes. But there are some great antique stores and things like that that uh, she really likes going to. And of course, I like looking at antiques also. And that's why I like looking in a mirror, I guess. So he is on, Daryl that is, every Wednesday at 4 p.m. And they always give a plug for this show by saying that I'm a part of his advisory board, along with Bill Morris of UCI, who's also on this show. And uh, let's not forget Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show here on KMET, Monday through Friday at 6 p.m. So he is a real worker. He's on five days a week. Not only that, but he is a lender and a great lender. And uh, boy, he's got a lot going on. But uh, I think that's great. And he does it very well. And I'm on his show usually once a month. Uh, Not this month, because we thought I was going into the uh, hospital for another vacation. But that's put off now till the 11th of next month. So maybe by March, I'll be back on his show regularly again. But don't forget, all that was about knowledge is power. And what is my day job? It's at the Loan Source, where uh, I am a loan officer. And my NMLS, 384565, and my Department of Real Estate number. And although you, I, I've mentioned many times, I do not sell real estate. I can turn you on to people who do in your area or several people or get the information that you're looking for. And I like to stay on top of those things. My my Department of Real Estate number is 792-630. Now, last week I did talk a bit about the COVID tests. I'm gonna repeat the address once again. And since then I tried it myself. It took me about a minute, less than a minute because my fingers slipped off the keyboard Otherwise, it'd be a lot quicker. Uh, It's the federal website that takes orders for those is covidtests.gov. You know, it's you could do www dot, but I I don't don't think it's necessary on these more uh, prevalent websites. Covid tests, plural, covidtests.gov. You put in your address. And that's it. And I guess they go out in five days or less or whatever. So it should be pretty good. Now, what I would like to do is to be able to tell you how accurate they are, because we do know that the uh, other at-home tests are not really considered to be 100% accurate. I think if you have some kind of symptoms, it's more accurate than if you don't have symptoms. But who knows? I've taken those tests. They're really easy. Of course, they're painless. And everybody, you know, is expecting, even when they go get a professional one, they're expecting somebody to, uh, you know, to put a jackhammer up your nostril. And that's not it. It only goes in about an inch at the at the moment. It's, it's very easy. So just to bring you up to date, we have received a couple of housing market indicators within the last few days. And with all the doom and gloom about, uh, you know, prices going up, everything slowing down, home prices rose 1.1% in November. Now, if that doesn't seem like a great deal to you, remember that's one month. So 
uh, they're up 17.5% year over year, according to FHA, uh, FHFA House Price Index. So if you're going to consider not making payments on your reverse mortgage and you have an interest rate of three, anywhere from two and three quarters to three and a half, uh, remember that that is only on the amount of the loan, whereas the larger amount of the whole house, 17 and a half percent. Well, well, you know, I'm not sure if that's true for any length of period. I do know from being on Ron Siegel's show that it's been about 6% overall in California, all of California for over 60 years. And that's a wonderful thing. And while those figures are twice the monthly average we've seen over the last 20 years, I'm talking 60, echoing concerns about access and affordability, it does look like the torrid pace of home appreciation is beginning to cool off. Not by those numbers, though. The case Schiller Home Price Index showed an 18.8% gain for the year, uh, for the year, in November, but not just for November, but for a year. But that's expected to decelerate as mortgage rates rise. Now, decelerate, wow, they got a long way to decelerate before they really hurt us very much, don't they? So, um, quick joke, I wonder what my parents did to fight boredom before internet. Well, the joke is, is we remember before internet pretty easy. I remember I remember before fax machines, I think. So you remember mimeograph machines and things like that? NASA Noe? Mm -hmm. Remember mimeograph machines yes. and those? And what were the, the other ones? Mimeograph. Yeah. Xerox machines, mimeograph. No, no, Xerox, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so this is a joke on us because obviously uh, most of us remember what it was like before the internet. So I wonder what my parents did to fight boredom before the internet. Net. And uh, I asked my 17 brothers and sisters, but they didn't know either. Okay, that's not a bad joke. If you... I have a joke. You have a joke? You yeah. want to lay it on us yeah. now? I've got several, but I'll just... Uh, get throw in one. Why were all the corn stalks afraid of Jimmy? Why were all the corn, the corn stalks, stalks afraid, afraid of Jimmy? I don't know why. Because Jimmy cracks corn and he don't care. Okay. I guess that tells us pretty big. That's a heck of a way to start off the show. Okay. Now, what is today? It's International Lego Day. And uh, you remember Legos, don't you? And yes, I remember before there were such things as Legos. I remember in Detroit as a little boy, I had blocks that I built things out of. The blocks were about an inch and a half, maybe, yeah. On each side, they had letters and numbers and things like that. I was supposed to learn, but I never did from those. And anyway, Legos, not Egos, although uh, I do like Egos. And of course, uh, that Egos reminds me of when Strange. When is Stranger Things coming back? I don't know. Next year. Next year, Stranger yeah. Things is coming back next year. And you mean in 2022 or 2023? Three, I think 2023. 2023. Mm. And now that we just got turned down by Sean here to uh, the Silent Sea, it looks like the next season will also be 2023. So mm. gives We're us almost done. Well, except for 2023. So yeah. we got to stay healthy and be around for when that happens. But by, speaking of Legos, the little colored plastic bricks that I use to make toy buildings, vehicles, creatures, machines, anything, they can be taken apart and put back together as often as you like, kind of like transformers, I guess. I have seen some incredible train layouts made with Lego pieces, just amazing. Uh, I think the last one of those I saw was not at a fair, it was at, well, it was at a train fair in Fullerton a couple of years ago, but it's probably three years ago by now. Mm. So this holiday, meaning Lego Day, uh, we applaud the creators of Legos and the day, the creator, I guess, and uh, 
the day he first submitted his patent for the original Lego back in 1958. Danish carpenter Gottfried Kirk Christensen created the brick system, making it strong, versatile, and less likely to fall apart because everything kind of snaps together, right? Uh, which was kind of made it difficult for us guy, little kids that like to break, you know, break things and destroy buildings. But he submitted the concept of multiple bricks being used together in a building system, and this protected his design from being ripped off by competitors. Now wait a minute. He submitted. Okay, so getting it patented. His company actually began in 1932 creating a variety of wooden toys. Look how popular the building bricks are today. In 1967, Legoland opened, not 67, that long ago? Wow. No. Yeah? Wow. I'm going to check on it. Anyway, opened to the public. Oh, in Denmark. I see. And now there are nine of them, I, you know, across Europe, Asia, and the U.S. I only thought there was the one here oh, around Carlsbad area, inland of there. There are Lego sunflowers, birds, Star Wars, Harry Potter, superheroes, Jurassic World, Stranger, wow, Stranger Things Lego, speaking of 2023, uh, Disney Train, and station, even the Titanic. Now, when we say those, those are probably kits. Mm -hmm. And that means that you get uh, all the pieces. Now, I don't know whether the kits tell you how to put them together or whether it's like a puzzle. I think if it were like a puzzle, I would never get it done. Pieces are sold individually and in sets. Some rare pieces are very valuable and all are collectible. So it's also, and this kind of coincides with Legos, is the National Pop Art Day, which is also today. Oh, this Mr. Lego? Now, I don't think he was put together by with Legos, but there's a picture of him in Denmark, probably. And here's another one. I see some more over there. Okay. I think you can see him pretty well. And this, of course, is uh, something we're all familiar with, those colors. Can you imagine as a little boy wearing a bow tie out playing with blocks and things? Not me, but anyway, what's this one? Oh, this is the... Uh, Factory. Factory. Do you know what year this was from? From sure. thereabouts? Early. Early. Early factory. Uh, this the wooden toys or after the we don't know for I'm sure. Not sure. Okay. Let's get in a little closer to see. And this is Oh, look at them. Oh, sorry. I'm supposed to be sharing that. This looks like wooden toys from the prior to the little blocks. But it looks like they were pretty successful back in those days also. A little painting, little trucks and stuff. Okay. Uh, this holiday, this holiday, meaning National Pop Art Day, January 28th, uh, is to celebrate the birthday of artist Jackson Pollock. He was a strong influence on the movement of future and future movements, and his work is considered to be fundamental in laying the groundwork for the creation of the pop art movement. He's over here for his birthday. Okay, oh, so he's coming up later. So we'll leave the pictures for that. Um, the pop art movement emerged in the United Kingdom and the United States during the 1950s. It defied fine arts by including imagery from advertising and comic books, such as bright colors, big words, sharp designs. Artists that are considered part of that movement are Robert Rushenberg, 
Is that the picture that we have in the bathroom of the of the shell? I mean, of the standard gas station. Mm -hmm. Okay, Jasper Johns, Andy Warhol. No kidding. Keith Herring, David Hockney, Roy Lichtenstein, and Peter Max, to name a few. Uh, not only artists from the U.S. and the U.K., but from France, Spain, Japan, Italy, and Belgium. And today is the time when you may want to make your own pop art with colored pencils, markers, or paints. Okay, so should we take a break and make some pop art? No? But anyway, National Corn Chip Day. Okay, how silly to have a holiday for corn chips. But the study behind it is kind of interesting. Not a so silly story. C.E. Elmer Doolin bought a bag of fried corn chips with his sandwich in 1932 from a small cafe in San Antonio, Texas. He enjoyed them so much when she discovered the owner of the cafe was eager to return to Mexico and willing to sell his business. Doolin pawned his mother's wedding ring, oh boy, to purchase the manufacturer and the recipe. He started selling them from his car, Model T Ford. He sold them for five cents a bag and earned about $2 profit per day. And now the company he founded, Frito Company, is the largest manufacturer of corn chips in the USA. Pretty interesting. In the early days, Doolins began making the chips, <coughs> excuse me, in the kitchen of their home. They picked the corn, would wash and grind the corn on their own hand roll and fried them, producing 10 pounds in an hour. So the demand rose, no kidding. The family moved the production to the garage, from the kitchen to the garage, and later to a duplex next door. By 1933, after inventing and patenting a number of machines that would cut the chips, they were able to produce 100 pounds an hour. I don't think I can eat that much, but I can try. The family moved their headquarters to Dallas and opened the first research and development lab of the food industry. Wow. And established new products in 1933, 35, I'm sorry, fried pork skins. Yes. Restaurants and food competitions use corn chips of all kinds and dishes like Frito pie casserole, corn chip salad, burritos, toppings for cheeseburgers, and ground up for batter for fried chicken, yeah, potatoes, all kinds of things. Appreciate all that went into creating those corn chips and grab a bag today. Better than that, eat a bag today. Is this Mr. Frito-Lay? Mm -hmm. This is, yeah. There we go. Doolin, right? Mm -hmm. The Doolin Duel. There he is, and it is about time. We got to see if our uh, our guest is ready to jump on. So uh, let's uh, give it back to Sean and see what happens. <laughs> 